What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we have a brand new champion guide for a newer champion in the game named Krokmar the Devourer. Now, this champion right here is a part of the Lizardman faction. He's a spirit-based affinity, legendary, HP-based. And looking over his kit, you know, the first thing I like to do is try to figure out, like, where is the, the niche to the kit? And the first thing that stands out is Voracious Hunger here, the passive. Whenever this champion attacks, decreases the target's attack or defense by 5%, as well as accuracy or resistance by 5%, depending on which stat is the highest. Stacks up to 30%. Now, that is the thing that stood out the most right from the start, along with being a spirit-based affinity champion. Now, if we go over the kit itself, his A1, Meat Splitter, attacks one enemy, attacks all enemies one time if the first attack is critical. This one also stood out too, because it has the two attacks. You get one attack versus one person. You get an AoE attack against everybody else. And a second attack against that same first person you attacked. Pretty nice. I like that one. Gnashing Bog, the A2. Four turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies. Places a shield buff in his champion for two turns. Equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. Also heals his champion by 10% of their max HP for each critical hit. Pretty nice. Got an AoE. Okay, and then the A3, Apex Predator. Places a 30% increased crit rate buff and a 30% increased crit damage buff on all allies for three turns, then grants an extra turn. Six turn cooldown, four turns when booked up. So I looked at the kit and I go, you know, the passive is very interesting. It's a stat drainer. He's like devouring your stats. He's taking away 30% defense or attack, as well as resistance and accuracy. So, or accuracy, uh, in addition to the first stat. So that by itself, I go, well, how can I drain their stats the fastest, right? Like, what's the quickest way to get to this? I think it's the A1, right? The A1 with the two attacks. Because you can get two attacks on one champion per turn. Now, thinking about this kit, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're spirit-based. So, the natural affinity, strong affinity, is force. What kind of force champions do we have in the game? We have some nice force champions that have attack-based or defensive-based skills. And, you know, immediately tons come to mind. Same thing for spirit-based. You know, you got like your Duchess, for example. When it comes to force, you got your Harimas. So you got these tanky champions in the game with high resistance, high defense, or say uh, it could be a high attack for a different champion. And I'm like, can Krokmar actually drain their stats to a sufficient level where he's actually good? Like, can I count on Krokmar to beat Harima in the arena? That's what I'm wondering in my mind. Take a look at the reviews here. Pretty decent reviews across the board. So I'm going to be trying them out today in the Hydra, Arena Offense, and maybe a couple other little spots. You know, I tried them in the Dragon's Lair, for example. Not bad. Not great. Not bad. Uh, so we'll go over that real quick and... Before we do that, we'll go check out his gear and we'll check out what we're working with as far as masteries and artifacts go. All right, so we're looking over our Krokmar build here. What I want to note is I'm not a part of the content creator program. I do not have an excess of free resources just available to use whenever I feel like it. I do not re-gear my champs for videos with my best gear. This Krokmar is using probably the 30th best you know, lethal set I have in the game. He has literally the, the last gear that I've used. This is not my top gear. I'm not swapping out my top gear for my top champion to make him better, to make his uh, stats look good for this video. This is literally just what he has. This is his build. This is how he's going to stay for my account. This is it. So we have lethal. We have crit damage. And then when I was looking at the A1, I was thinking to myself, how can I get the stat drain to happen as quickly as possible? And I was thinking, you know, the best thing would be counterattacks and ally attacks, right? So we have counterattack accessories down here. Makes sense. Now for the stats, we went with crit damage gloves, HP percentage chest, HP percentage boots. You do want to focus up on the speed to some degree, like you're going to need some speed, right? Now the main stats, we went over HP, a little bit of defense so you can survive, some speed, at least 70% crit rate because you're getting a 30% crit rate buff. And then you got 240% crit damage, which is like the main focus, probably what you want to do with this guy. 
Check out the masteries. We got them fully booked up. We don't have a blessing. Now, mastery-wise, I went with kind of an arena nuker build, but also at the same time, more of a sustained nuking type build versus like a one-shot type team. Now, we went with uh, down the defense side here. We're trying to get over to this counterattack, Retribution. You know, this help us a little bit of uh, you know sustainability during the fight, keep us alive a little longer. We went with the offense tree all the way down to Helm Smasher. Methodical, you know, I like it. We're gonna be using that A1 a lot. Let's get to some actual gameplay footage. Let's see if this guy can actually measure up against the Harimas, the Duchesses, the Necrits, the Terraces, and all these nasty baddies we got in the arena. And then we'll check them out in the Hydra. First thing I want to find out is. Can Krokmar take out Harima here? Now, a tanky team like this, Harima is going to be pretty much the only source of DPS. I mean, you know, someone else, Necrit, UDK can do a little damage, but the main fear here is going to be Harima. So I'm very curious to see if we could take out Harima with Krokmar, lower her stats, lower Necrit stats, Duchess's stats, and see if we can actually, like, take out these stall teams without dying. I mean, that's the first goal here. So, so far, so good. I'm going to ignore UDK. And the reason being is because he's really not a threat. Um, once we got Duchess dead, Duchess cannot revive anybody else. Once we got Harima dead, we have no chance to die. So, if we can focus on those two, what I'm trying to do here. Now, Prokmar with the A1, as long as he gets to crit, he'll do a double attack. So, we got, it doesn't matter who we attack. The first attack is going to go to UDK. And he's got the stone skin on. Then the second attack will hit everybody. And we have Cardio, so we're focusing on Harima or Necrit at a time here, like right there. So he can do his uh, little bonus attack with his passive. Now Necrit's gone. Really, there's not any more threat here. Harima wasn't doing a lot of damage. And since we got the you know, decrease in defense over here, I don't think she's very threatening at all. Now she's gone. We got UDK left. And that's basically what UDK fights are like is he kind of just kind of sits there to the end and doesn't really do anything. Check out the damage. 276,000. Not bad, not bad. Uh, we could probably find a different team to fight. Let's go ahead and check the next one. All right, so we found another tanky team here. We got Pytheon, Harima, UDK, and Necrit. All very much like a stall team, even though you got Harima there for your uh, DPS. So we'll focus on Pytheon first. As soon as we take out the Resurrector, we don't got to worry about anybody else in the fight. Now, you could focus on the Nuker, but then the Resurrector is going to bring her back. If you're very fearful of the Nuker doing damage and killing your entire team, like what just happened with Kaima right there, then take out the Nuker first. But since we got Necrit with protection right there, it's going to be a little more trickier than that. Now, the ally attack at the moment, we've got the ally attack. Pytheon's down. That's a great attack. But what we don't have, is you'll see, they got full buffs. We don't have no decreased defense, no weaken. And we brought Kaimar in this time, so we could probably, you know, buff strip, take off the buffs, buff removal. So, honestly, wasn't like a, a big factor in this fight. Still got UDK over there with the stone skin. But again, like I said last fight, UDKs are meant to sit there until the last, you know, man standing. They don't do a whole lot. They just kind of, you know, prolong everybody else's death. But at the same time, once he's, like, singled out like he is now... I mean, this is a matter of time before he's dead. So we don't really care about the UDKs at all in the fight. We're going to focus on the threats, which are the Resurrectors and the Nukers. But once we got UDK dead here, and he's going down fast once that stone skin dropped, I mean, we're looking good. So far, so good. This has been a success. This is a pretty tanky team. Try the next one. All right, so we found another stall defense here. This time, we don't have any actual Nukers, so there's no real threat of actual dying. But what I want to see is, can we kill these guys faster? Now, I brought in Sun Wukong. I brought in Lydia to speed this process up. We got the buff strip right there. We got the defense down the weekend. And Krokmar with the A2. Not the greatest. Not the greatest, for sure. So we got Duchess there. The Revive actually killed by Lydia. We don't got to worry about the Reviver this time. We got Pytheon left. And that's it. It's a wrap. Wow. So that time, Sun Wukong is contributing quite a bit of damage to this fight. All right, this time I want to do the complete opposite. Instead of going after a super tanky stall-like team, I'm going to make myself a super tanky team and try to take out some nukers. 
We found a team here. It's got Siffy, it's got Heferak, it's got Baron. It should be quite a bit of nuking power. I tried them out with a different team earlier to see how good they nuked. They wiped my team out, no problem. So this should be good. We got Siffy there. As soon as we take out Baron and Heferak, the threats are over. More or less got to worry about, you know, the damage. And so far, so good. I don't see a whole lot of damage here, but we do see Krokmar's already lighting them up. Now, besides the fact they're almost dead and they took a lot of damage, he should be reducing their damage so that they're less effective. So if they weren't effective in their full form with the initial nuke, they're most definitely not going to be doing nothing for the rest of the fight. So the way I see that right there is we've already neutralized the fact that they're nukers, and then now that we've started to, to you know, do some work on them, lower the stats a little bit, I mean, the fight's pretty much over. Now we got UDK sitting here like usual, just lasting until the end. Uh, so once we wipe out UDK here, this one's a wrap. Uh, it's already a wrap, right? It's just a matter of time. And, you know, since we didn't bring the offensive champs this time, like the, you know, Sun Wukongs, the um, Prince Kaimars, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a slower fight. Uh, but, you know, we kind of expected slow fights right from the start with Krokmar due to how his kit kind of works. Like, we're not coming out here trying to nuke first with the Arbiter. We're not coming out here. I want to try to make sure this guy's an HP-based nuker who can sit here and take a beating and still dish one out. There you go, 388,000. Very nice. Taking the beating and dishing it right back out. All right, so I had a different idea in mind this time. I want to try attacking a Warlord, Yameko, or Crixia right here. Now, the idea is this. They can lock out your abilities and force you to use your A1. Now, normally people do not want to use their A1. Look at that. They're already dead. Wow. Wow. They don't want to use their A1, and it kind of ruins the fight. Most champs can't live through the attacks. The onslaught comes, they all die, and the fight's over. Now, with a Warlord, Yumeko, or a Crixia here, can we survive, and can we make them actually fear Krokmar's A1? Like, do you really want to see Krokmar A1 you? That's the question. Can Warlord stay alive? Can Crixia stay alive? Can they sustain? Now, most fights, those champs are going to power right through you, and the second the Warlord gets his uh, cooldown reduction skill off, you're dead. Same with Yumeko. So, you know, that's how the fights go. This one, we got UDK last until the end, so he, he kind of made it a way longer fight, but we had this fight won within seconds. Wow. Uh, it might be a weak team, but we'll see with the next one. All right, so I found the best Yumeko Warlord Crixia team I could find at the moment. It's really not uh, easy. I'm not finding a lot of good options. We have Ninja as a DPS here, so he's not a terrible threat DPS-wise, you know, typically, but I feel like we're going to have to worry about debuffs here. The Freeze, the HP Burn, and Mithrala's A2 with the Hex. On top of uh, Yumeko's Hex as well. So, got a much tankier team here. We had to bring in someone like Elva so we can get a cleanse. Now, we're trying to survive through the damage and try to get Krokmar to use his A1 through counterattacks, through you know other uh, forms here to get as much damage possible done and hopefully get the job done. Now, we are... Again, stat draining. So we're removing those stats. Decrease defense, decrease accuracy. So over time, this fight's going to get a little bit easier. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see if we can sit there and outlast the Yamekos. Outlast that cooldown reduction. Currently at the moment, we're going to focus on Arbiter. Try to get Arbiter dead. Because I don't feel a terrible threat from Ninja. Now, if Ninja was more threatening, I probably would focus more on him immediately. But we got the AoEs from the A1 as long as we get the crit. Now, because he doesn't have the crit buff, he won't have 100% crit rate base. So as long as he doesn't have the crit rate buff, he's not going to hit 100% time with that second attack on the A1, but we can hope for the best. Right there, I think we got a weak hit from Valkyrie. It's looking a little iffy here, to be honest. All right, we got the crit rate buff. Go ahead and pop. No, let's go ahead and use the A1 on Yumeko. That way we get the double hit. Let's see if we take out Ninja. Ooh. So Ninja's got the unkillable buff. Swift Perry Ninja. Okay. At this point, we have the buffs. We got the HPs. We got the shields. Yumeko's down. We have to fear. No more cooldown reductions. This one's a wrap. Should be it. Go ahead and hit double attack on Mithrala with the A1. Bam. Dropped her. At the end of the day, all we were trying to do is survive and weather the storm. We did that. So mission accomplished.
All right, final thoughts on Croc Mar in the arena before I move on to the Hydra fight. We're going to demonstrate the Hydra, then we're going to demonstrate maybe a little bit of Dragon, and then wrap this thing up. The arena, is he niche? Yes, he feels kind of niche. Can he get the job done? I do feel like he is getting the job done. We have an interesting fight here. I got into a fight with E.T. Chester, and I put this one on auto. So what happened was we ended up wiping out the entire team got UDK left and it ended up being a battle between UDK and Krokmar who's obviously very slow and not very well geared and uh, it was a battle to see if we can you know stat drain UDK enough to kill him in the end and we were able to do that with the team I put it on auto I came back and here we go it was, it's basically a, a long drawn out fight the question remains is he getting the job done is he killing meta champs is he fighting meta teams in the arena and is he usable and I find the answer to that to be yes. I think the answer is yes. Is he going to be a meta champ? Is he going to take over the arena? Is everybody going to be using him in the future? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I, I just sincerely doubt he'll be like a top champion in the game. But he is getting the job done in his little niche. So I got to applaud him on that. Go take over to the Hydra real fast and finish this video up. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet for the Hydra fight because I was kind of underwhelmed with this performance. Um, I'm not even doing this on Nightmare. I run about 100, 200 million Nightmare scores. And uh, this guy, you know, put him on hard. And I was like, you know, maybe if we use him on a team, maybe the Nightmare, it could be brutal, it could be hard, doesn't matter. He'll do the stat drain. He'll keep the team alive. Lower the defense. Should help the scores a little bit from the other, the other champions. But we got to get, you know, the A1 to go off pretty often because he doesn't have a lot of attacks. We need counterattacks. We need ally attacks. What you see is the heads are dying pretty fast. He's not doing a lot of stat draining. I mean, you know, we got other champs out there that do a lot more damage, provide a lot more utility. They do a lot more for the fight. He's not really doing like enough for me to justify trying to build a team around him or to even bring him into the fight. So maybe there's like some kind of a niche role for him in a, a nightmare team. I'm not sure exactly, but I'd rather bring a Krisk, a Mishinaki, a Siffy, a uh, Newt, Husk, Ukko. I mean, there's a million people, Nekmothar, that I'd rather bring ahead of him, I think. So if you don't have better options, maybe he's going to be a great option for you in this type of fight. But if you do have better options available to you, you know, I don't see the allure to want to bring him into this fight when there's so many other champs that seem to outperform him. So I was a little bit underwhelmed. I thought he'd do more with the stat drain, like, you know, the head of wrath right there with the decreased attack. Um, but, you know, maybe provide a little more extra damage with the decreased defense. But... To be honest, uh, the, the results were kind of underwhelming for me. So that's just kind of where he was in the Hydra fight for me. All right, last but not least, I want to talk about him in some dungeons real fast. I brought him to uh, Dragon 25, and his damage is not overwhelming. It's not underwhelming. It's actually pretty decent. Um, what he uh, brings to the table is, you know, the stat drain, obviously. So if the Dragon's not going to kill you on the opening attack, you'll continue to decrease the attack, decrease the defense. You should start doing a Snowball more damage as you go on. And my Fushan and my Chagger are really not built poorly. They're really built like pretty decent. So at the end of the fight, the damage scores are looking pretty good. You know, he's got 2.5 million, which is no slouch at, at all. That's pretty decent damage. So, you know, I do like him in the dungeons. I think he's a nice progression champ. So if you need to progress through the game, I'm sure he can help you out in many different places. Let's take one last look at Krokmar before I wrap this video up. Here's his stats one last time. Got 93,000 HP, 2,500 defense, 174 speed, 78 crit rate, 240 crit damage, 190 resistance, 171 accuracy. Though he doesn't use accuracy. We got no blessings on him. We got full books, masteries. Here he is. He has a support staff here. We got Mithrala, Ursaga. Valkyrie, Elva, Pytheon, Lydia, Sun Wukong. So at the end of the day, I really like Krokmar. You know, I do think like he's useful. I will continue using him in the arena. I'm not so sure about the Hydra. I'm not so sure about Dragon Fight or any of the dungeons for myself personally. But you never know. When it comes to the city of Centranos, Soul Cross, we're going to be using a lot of champions there. So when he comes up into the, those, you know, rotations, I definitely will be using them. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I really appreciate your patronage and your viewership. So please like, comment, and subscribe. You guys take it easy. Have a great weekend. Peace.